This is the Millennial Millionaire Through Real Estate Podcast. What's up, guys? This is a Friday personal episode and a very different one for that matter, as you can see. Um, we are using a different camera and a different setup and a different location. And I'm going to be answering questions and reading some prompts that people were sending in the last couple of days, kind of an ask me anything type of show, but also really what's new and top of mind with what I've been doing. So if this is a type of show you want to see or hear more of, just drop a comment or let me know. We're always tinkering, trying to improve things, but the title of this podcast episode, and it will be out on YouTube as well, is Handling Business Changes and the Seasons of Life, What is Coming Next? Some of you guys know I'm in Medellin, Colombia right now. been living here with a couple other creators and entrepreneurs the last couple of weeks and plan to be here for at least another month. And a lot of stuff has changed and happened since getting here, but also um, since working on a few things as uh, business develops and changes in time. So we're going to get into all that. But for those that are new to the show, one, thank you for being here. Um, we try to unpack all things around financial freedom, real estate, Airbnb, wholesaling, and all the other income strategies that I think come along with doing real estate investing and content creation. Content creation has become <clears throat> one of the most interesting things that I think has been a development for me in making money, but also building a brand, spreading awareness, and networking in general. So we're going to get into all that. So the first thing I actually want to read is something that's been top of mind for me, um, but something that I wish I would have known when I was starting my real estate or business or entrepreneurial journey. And that is this before kind of like anything gets going, I think evaluating life as like seasons or like cyclical is very important. And I say that because at the end of my time with NetApp and then in my like time building the business that eventually set me financially free, I got really burned out uh, at the end. And I guess I've had these phases in life where I've experienced burnout, if it's playing competitive golf, if it's my job, if it's working really hard on a side hustle. I just think that is something that maybe the way that I'm wired or probably a lot of other people, but working really hard and then being tired or sick of something and needing time off. But I think what I usually do or have done in the past is not take that time off and not pivoted to get fresh, to take time off, to enjoy something else and then come back to that thing after I miss it. So what I realized for me is now I'm going to try to break everything up, up into seasons of, okay, is this a growth season? Is this a learning season? Like what are the projects we're trying to work on right now? And then in doing that, come up with a plan and a tactic and a schedule that can fit whatever the goal is for that thing. And in some cases for me, what I'm realizing now is there are going to be times when taking time off and forcing myself away from the activity or the business for extended periods of time is the best thing to do because one, it'll make me come at things with a different angle and two, I'll actually maybe miss them and I'll want to come back to work or work on the things that kind of felt stale. Like total like candid candor here there was a time where when i was doing the daily podcast i got really sick of it but i was just doing it because i felt like it was the thing that i needed to do but in time realized i could just take a step back and do once a week or twice a week and it's not going to be the end of the world but i think we drive ourselves to a point where we just want to push so hard so my takeaway with all this and if there's a learning that can be applied <clears throat> is that if you're ever feeling burned out or uninspired, this is the most cliche, trite, overused advice, but I had to learn it myself and I had to experience it. But the advice is to take time away from whatever you're doing or evaluate it. So for me right now, what I'm thinking with my business and my life is I do want to work almost like on the school calendar. I want to work hard from maybe September to May on new projects, really long hours, maybe standing up new things, hiring people. Um, just new difficult projects and challenges. And then what I think for me, just because I like to play golf, I like to enjoy the summers. I just always have since I was a kid, I think jokingly used to think that I would make a good teacher for that reason was to then maybe uh, take time off for the summers to just focus on playing golf and traveling. And even though I technically am traveling right now, I'm in another country, I'm still working. I'm still working on projects. I'm curious. We're doing calls. We're doing stuff like this, creating content. And it's just very different than taking time completely off. 
But what I also realized was that for me, taking time off didn't need to be the typical lay on a beach. It could be playing golf or hanging out with friends or just being lazy and watching Netflix, which I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs really just kind of shit on. So we're going to not do that here. Um, but that's just what I wanted to open the episode with and talk about because I think people are at different stages and um, a lot of us, I've said it before, you know, to just keep grinding and if you enjoy your work, keep doing it. But I do think there are times when we kind of forget that uh, we are getting burned out and it's actually not helpful anymore to keep spending time on things. So anyway, that's that. What we're going to talk about next uh, is just some updates, what's top of mind for me, what my progress on some things is, and some challenges that we've been having. I think you guys will appreciate the challenges. Uh, The first thing is getting my real estate license. Uh, I did not take it seriously enough at the beginning. I actually uh, didn't take it seriously enough at all. And I was like winging it, going through the classes and the school and the modules and questions after each video, but I realized it's not a joke of a test and uh, I did not pass my first time. So for those who don't know, and basically what I wish I would have known from the beginning is that you have a school test that is just like an online course. And at the end of that, there are one or two tests that you need to pass. And the thing about those school tests is a lot of times if you don't pass them within the first, first, first or second try, you'll have to retake the entire 75 hours over again. So that was a little frustrating because I did fail one of those once and I had to go back and take it again. Um, And now what I would have done was basically have a tutor from the beginning. I would have learned the lingo from the beginning because I realized that's why I was missing questions. And then I would have started doing questions only at the end when I was preparing for the test. That would have been like my sequencing for studying better. But now I am one test away from getting the license. I just need to pass the national, or sorry, the uh, North Carolina state test and that'll be it. And for those wondering, why am I getting the, t- uh, the license? Do I need it for what I'm doing with real estate? Do I need it to make more money or do open houses or buyer or seller appointments, whatever? No, I've talked about this a little bit, but the reason I'm getting it is strictly for the passive income and for maybe the commission savings on deals that I buy with partners. And that's going to be part of my value add that I will put my commission toward the down payment. But really what I'm getting it more for is for the referrals. Like I've talked about it a little bit, but if you have your license and you refer someone to another broker, like you you have your license and a friend of yours wants to buy a property and you refer them to another agent, if they end up buying something through that agent, you're entitled to 20 to 25% of that agent's commissions and you didn't really have to actually do anything. So to me, that's really important and like really exciting to make more passive income by just making text introductions to people and not having to go do open houses or showings and stuff like that. So that's the first thing. What I wish I would have known as far as how to study and take the license test more seriously because I've been investing for five years, six years at the point I was taking the test and it's not easy. I respect anyone that has their license, but the reason I am getting it is for the passive income. Okay, the next thing, some of you guys know, but Claire changed roles in MMTR and she is no longer handling the day-to-day of property management. We had a YouTube video come out about this, there's more YouTube videos coming, but basically what we did was instead of offloading the properties to a property manager, we knew enough how to do it ourselves, but it was just gonna be a matter of who wanted to do the work, but neither of us really wanted to do the day-to-day or be on call constantly. That is something that I think people brush over a lot of times when they are talking about Airbnb and the benefits of it is that you're on call 24 seven if you self-manage and you don't have a process or a system to not do that. So that's not a good thing. So basically in that time, we hired um, a new team. So we'll talk about that. Then the next thing is content and YouTube. I have been obsessed with content and YouTube the last couple weeks. I think it's so important and why I think everyone should be making it a priority. The next thing, digital marketing and products, been focusing on that a lot more um, and just recording more content. Some of it is free, some of it isn't paid, but as another way that if you have a skill and you're doing something that people are asking you how it's done, you can make money from putting that out as a product or a course. Uh, The next thing, I had LASIK. My eyes, how do they look? I think they look okay, actually. Um, No more redness. We have a YouTube video actually coming out today outlining the entire process 
And I realize now when I say today, this is actually going to come out like a week later, but you'll check it out if you want. <clears throat> but outlining the research, the problems, the good, the bad, all that. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to talk about are content collabs. Some of you guys have been learning about the NFT space or crypto in general, but there's a couple of creator friends of mine that are considering doing a coin and uh, sorry, an NFT. And we're going to talk a little about that. I want to get your guys' opinion and see if that's something that you guys find interesting or if you guys think it's crazy. So um, the first thing I mentioned a lot about already, but the real estate license, um, the last thing that I would just say, in addition to learning the lingo at the beginning, having a tutor is to find an accountability partner. I still owe this guy, Ruben, who has been on the podcast. He's a great guy. I still, or no, he owes me uh, $2,000 because I gave him $2,000 at the beginning and I said, don't give it back to me until I pass my test. I may have quit at, at a certain point already when I was like, why do I really need this? I'm making enough money other ways. But to him, uh, I don't want him to have my money. And I also feel like by him being there, I don't want him to judge me of not being able to pass this. So not a lot of other people know. I think by the time this video comes out, I'll have already passed it. But um, I needed some accountability for it. I've talked about it, but there was money on the line and him texting me all the time like, hey, what's up? Did you get it done? And he has an incentive in seeing me get it other than the money because he wants me to be an agent on his team under EXP. It's kind of like a a very nicely organized legal pyramid scheme, but they do it right. So he wants me to get it, but having accountability is really important. So if you have questions about the real estate exam or the test or the license, hit me up, happy to help, happy to answer any questions. There's a lot I wish I would have known at the beginning, but uh, the main thing would be you don't want to take the school like not seriously because you will waste a lot of time if you have to retake the 75 hours. So that's not such a good thing. Okay. <clears throat> the next topic, training and the new team management structure for Airbnbs without Claire. So I'm curious, if any of you guys manage your own properties, I'd love to know what systems you guys have experimented with. We have really like deep dived into all of these of virtual assistants, automation, guest management, um, smart homing the house. But, you know, Claire and I have worked together for two years. We worked together when I was um, at NetApp. She was at NetApp too as an SDR and I was an inside rep. So it was like sales. And um, ultimately she wanted to learn about real estate and we got started together working in the business on podcasting first and then Airbnb management second. And you know, back to what I was mentioning before about people not setting up their Airbnbs maybe the right way. Airbnb, if you are not putting systems in place is not really fun because you're on the clock 24 seven. A guest can message you at eight o'clock on a Friday night, which always seems to happen. When you're at dinner or movie, you're out of the country and you have to deal with it. And if you don't have help or a team or automation set up to maybe troubleshoot issues, you are the bottleneck. You are the person that's gonna deal with that. So ultimately the last like month and a half, all we were doing was training the new people to come in, know how to handle situations, um, understand each of the properties, understand guest management and take over. And the ones during the day are US based and the one that helps overnight is um, overseas. And it's worked really well, but ultimately I really wanna drive this home that guys, where I think you should be putting your attention is yes, on analyzing deals, on getting the financing, on setting the property up. But then beyond that, if you were planning to have more than one property, it would be starting to think about the process for managing the day-to-day, -day, which I think is really important, really underrated. We're gonna have a lot more content coming out about that, but you need to have automated messaging set up. You need to have triggers set up for your cleaners. They need to be able to see your calendar. Um, they need to be taking pictures between turns and helping you with claims. All these sorts of things can help give you your time back in addition to helping you make money with Airbnb. So that's been the transition. Now Claire is helping primarily with the content creation, with wholesaling, with training our new people, um, and with our communities. She's been doing an amazing job with doing like community management for Cashflow Community, MMTR, and then our new mastermind that's coming up um, in January. So if you have any questions on that too, just reach out, but really excited about the changes with that. And you know, it just, I was a little worried at first with her changing, but ultimately she wasn't happy. So if she wasn't happy, she wasn't gonna be, you know, energized with anything she was doing and it's just, not cool to see someone that's not happy with their day to day. So she had to get out of it, but it's interesting too, because she thought that's what she wanted to do at the beginning. 
um, and then realized that that's not what she wanted and someone else kind of nudged her into it. Um, okay, next, content and YouTube and why I think this is so important right now. Guys, content and, and YouTube and podcasting, it's leverage, it's your new resume, it is social proof, it is warm introductions anytime you wanna do business with someone. I don't think resumes matter anymore, or if they do, they need to be just the front of maybe a three month free unpaid trial with someone because resumes are cheap, interviews are bullshit, and if you don't have a pedigree or a track record that's posted publicly on the internet, it's very hard for me to trust someone at this point because Again, talk is cheap. You don't know until you've seen the history of someone or you have an amazing referral. So the way that I think about content is like a pillar, um, a, like a set of pillars. And then there's leverage that goes into those pillars. But ultimately, you can repurpose content if you have a lot of YouTube content or podcast content or TikTok. Every TikTok I make turns into 10 pieces of content. And it's going to probably probably be 12 or 13 when we start getting them transcribed and turned into tweets and screenshots of those tweets as Instagram posts, but it's an amazing for it's amazing for repurposing. It's amazing for brand building. I've met so many cool people and now had so many brands reach out or try to do business with me just because they see the content that I'm putting out. So that's really cool. And then the next one is monetizing through sponsors and affiliates. Guys, this one is really underrated. I don't think people talk about this enough. If you stick with content creation for 12 months and you go hard at it, you do the right things, I think you should be making at least two to five thousand dollars a month from content creation. It could be sponsors, affiliates, paid posts, um, your own products that you put out because now you have attention. But ultimately, if you just stick with one thing for a year and you're consistent with it, you will be able to monetize. The next benefit, another thing that I think is awesome about creating content is the shelf life of it. If you create a YouTube video, People are going to be still searching that topic probably five years from now if it's relevant to evergreen topics like how to buy a property, how to get a loan, how to manage Airbnbs. People continue to search that. And when you keep getting views, you keep getting potential ad dollars or more subscribers or just more attention. So I'm really high on it, guys. That's where I've been shifting a lot of my attention to because also compared to real estate, I look at it as more scalable and it's less time like uh, driven or time commitment needed, I can just film these videos or you can just film these videos one day a week, stay consistent, put one out a week for the rest of the month after that and you're done. So some of you guys know I'm in a content creator house right now in Colombia. There's three other people that I got to know through social media uh, and it's really just eye-opening to see the money that can be made from this stuff just by putting a camera in front of your face and talking to it. That is not what I was comfortable doing. So that is that. The next topic and place I've been spending time is digital marketing and products. More people have just been asking about coaching and our masterminds um, and our products around that. We have all of our systems documented and recorded for training of internal employees. So um, it was an area that I think we're gonna be releasing and re-releasing some content on. I did hold off on a course for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to feel like we had enough experience with what we were doing to be really good at it. And the second reason was I wanted it to be something that people would, you know, actually need and, you know, people would actually get value out of. So now seeing enough people come back with questions on certain topics, um, we put out a lot of free content, but some people want more handholding. And again, if you're a creator out there or you run a business yourself, if you build in public and use social media, you can then create a coaching or an education arm that can drive revenue for your company. And it's totally cool. And I pay for education. People pay for education all the time. People are more willing to do it now than I think they used to be. So I would definitely consider that, but I've definitely been putting more time into that. The, uh, the next topic, LASIK. So I mentioned it, my eyes, they feel okay. They feel good. Um, one of the coolest experiences I could say I could remember, just the fact that my eyes... Uh, didn't work. I didn't have good vision before. And then in five minutes with a laser, uh, now my vision is good. So that is cool. I'm excited about it. There were some weird things with it that we talk about in the YouTube video on the channel, but ultimately um, it made me really happy and I don't have to lug around contacts or glasses anymore. So if you're on the fence, um, I definitely recommend checking out the video that we just dropped or DM me any questions or comment any questions, but it's really cool. I go through my whole process with it and I'm happy with it. Okay, 
Um, the last, last one that I wanted to talk about with you guys, curious your interest in this is NFTs. A friend of mine who has a very big social media following approached me and has been totally deep down the rabbit hole of, so, of uh, NFTs. He's like abandoned the rest of his business for now and he's just focusing on NFTs. And what he explained, which I thought was pretty cool in the NFT world, is that you can add utility or value to an NFT um, yourself or if you bring other people together. And what he means by that is by starting a community that the only way that people can access it or go to a conference or a meetup is if they have the, the NFT and they can trade it and it can kind of become like a, like a card swapping or like a flipper type concept of NFTs. I'm just at the onset of it, of buying them and looking at them and seeing what drives the value. But it's something that I'm sort of, I'm giving some time to, and I think you guys should too, especially if it has even half or a quarter of the attention or, or popularity that people are saying it could have. I think it's a good opportunity. And if you're entrepreneurial and you had a history of trading baseball cards or flipping things or selling stuff while you were a kid, I would definitely consider it. I don't know if it's um, here to stay forever, but I know right now or indefinitely for the next couple of years, it has a lot of attention. So I'll keep you guys posted if we do anything like that. But um, I don't know, I was I was interested in it when he said it because you can add utility to it and it's not just some like pump and dump thing because people can keep trading them and make money on it themselves. Actually, there's one more topic I have to call out and some of you guys might be in this business yourself, but wholesaling. This has been a long project restarting the wholesaling business. Some of you guys know I had two partners with wholesaling in Kentucky at the beginning of COVID. We made a good amount of money together, but it just wasn't set up the right way. We spun it down. And then over the last six months, I have restarted the wholesaling business leaner and I think a little bit more um, like tech driven. And I'm happy to say we closed two deals the last two weeks. Um, for about 30K profit. So we had some other expenses with those that um, we used JV partners to sell the deals with, but ultimately it was really nice to see some deals come through and show what deals we have coming on the front end. We also did just drop a YouTube video going through how we built the funnels for, for those deals, but I'm excited about it. I think it's a great way to find off-market properties and also make money without any of the risks that you have with flipping. Flipping to me is very um, unexciting. And if any of you guys are flippers, I'm sorry, but convince me why. Tell me why flipping is better than wholesaling. I don't see it. Okay, that is it for that. What's top of mind and what's exciting for me at the moment um, and some of my challenges. <laughs> but the next part and uh, the wind down here is gonna be content I've been checking out. I've actually been using Twitter a lot more. Maybe it's because it's heavy for crypto and NFTs. But I've been learning there more than books. I actually haven't opened a book in a while. I was reading um, Russell, ooh, the guy who started Virgin Records. If anyone knows that, I'm drawing a blank in the name. But uh, reading his biography, which is really good. But I've been liking Twitter because it's just educational. I don't feel as like, I don't resent myself as much when I'm on there compared to TikTok. And uh, I've been networking, or you can network with some really cool people on there. So. I've been liking Twitter and learning a lot on there. Um, completely not business related, but I've been watching Succession and I really like it. It may actually be my favorite show. Before that, it was Mad Men. But Succession, I think, is great because it combines a lot of things and it is kind of business related. So I do like it. If you uh, are into that sort of stuff, I definitely recommend checking it out. And uh, that's it for content. What's coming up personally for me uh, just joined a country club in Medellin this morning. I'm really excited about that to start playing golf again. And I could not believe how nice it was and how cheap it was. So there's probably going to be a whole YouTube video about that at some point. Um, I'm taking Spanish. I have a Spanish tutor that is hopefully going to be um, making me less of a gringo, which is just a word for a foreigner. Maybe a white foreigner here specifically. I don't know, but um, people call me that sometimes and it's okay. Uh, but it's funny. I am learning Spanish. Uh, hopefully I'll be passing a real estate exam by the time this releases. And like I said, filming tons of content. So if you guys have any topics, I'm always open to whatever topics people want to see more of because that is what brings value. So if you guys have any topics that you want to see more content on, just shoot me a DM, comment on this video or post in one of the Facebook groups 
and we will make content around it. I do a poll probably every month asking what videos you guys wanna see more of and or topics. And I'm always adding those. If someone says they want more virtual assistants or wholesaling or flipping, I'll add it. So guys, if you have any specific questions or topics you wanna see more of, just drop it and I will post it. I think that's pretty much it. If I didn't, if I missed anything, I will let you know. But that's it. Appreciate you guys being here. If you have any questions at all, just drop a comment below and we will post the links to all of our free groups, some of our paid groups, and some of our new offerings that are coming out if you're looking for coaching or help with anything. Um, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and talk to you guys soon. See ya. Hey, you millennial millionaire. Are you looking for help getting to the next level in real estate? Are you looking for accountability and strategy to achieve your goals? If so, Jonathan is now taking on one-on-one -on -one students and opening a few spots in his private mastermind. It's affordable and welcome to everyone. If you had any questions or think you may need a boost, send Jonathan a message on Facebook or email at johnjfarber at outlook.com. 